of you have used the internet? <laughs> How many of you have heard of the Internet Society? Yeah, so, so you know, you, you might wonder, you know, who runs the internet? Who, who organizes the internet? And the answer is nobody. You know, it's like the English language. Who controls the language? Nobody controls the language. It's just a mutually agreed kind of thing that I say something, you understand what I say, and therefore we can communicate. And basically the internet is the same kind of thing. There are protocols that, you know, that say that if, this, if you do this, then they understand that, and you know, that's the way that things work. So how, you know, after Vince Cerf and Robert Kahn came up with the original TCPIP, did these protocols and so on arrive? Well, they eventually, um, with John Postel and so on, they came up with this thing called the, the RFC process. People make requests for comment, and then they figure out with a thing that's known as consensus and running code what goes on, and this is, became the Internet Engineering Task Force, and, the inter and it became bigger and bigger, and then eventually they needed an organization to run it, so in 92, that was when the Internet Society was formed, and, uh, and the mission was uh, the Internet is for everyone, and you might have seen the picture of Vince Cerf with a t-shirt that says IT on everything. <coughs> So, uh, so, you know, that's how it continued. And so it was a hard slog in the early years, you know, to like knock out X500, which was what, you know, the ITU was trying to impose on everybody. Uh, but it grew up like weeds and now, you know, we, we all use it. Um, and, uh, and the hard work in the early days was just getting it around the world. There were, you know, there were whole countries in Africa that only had like 56K for the whole country, you know, and the, it just, you know, one satellite link and so on and so on. And, it's, and then the thing kind of took off and from trying to push it along, we were like running after it to try and hold it back by the early 2000s. And, uh, and fortunately we were able to take hold of the .org registry, which gave us some money. So now we keep going. We work at a lot of different levels in the Internet Society. We have, uh, so, and I'm with the local chapter here in New York. So, uh, I just thought I'd sort of introduce, basically, I've got a few web pages here. This is, um, this is our website, which you see, we would welcome someone who, a WordPress developer, to come in and improve this. Um, there you see the top thing we have there is like a comment on the net neutrality, where you might see that we're not totally gung-ho over net neutrality, because globally, we're worried in a lot of countries about them using this as an excuse. So look, America's done it. We're going to like regulate the internet in our country and make it you know, sender pays and all kinds of things that will screw up the free and open exchange of information. Um, so that's, there's, there, there's the comment on our site. Our site is isoc-ny.org. Um, so something's happened here that I've lost the rest of my pages, okay. So there's the Internet Society's main page, um, there, which is uh, isoc.org or internetsociety.org. Um, here's the mission, which is still the internet is for everyone, and uh, the mission to promote the open development and evolution and use of the internet for the benefit of all the people throughout the world. And this is what we'll come up to in a minute, because we're now extending beyond the world. And uh, so, just I had this Internet Engineering Task Force. There's their site. Internet Engineering Task Force is a fascinating organisation. If you ever, you know, they have these meetings. If you tune into their meetings. It's incredibly high di how dynamically you work to hear these engineers hashing things out. And the, the system is that when people agree with stuff, they hum. They go, mmm. So when things are going well, you hear this kind of sound coming through the room, mmm, and you know that, 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 thing, that things are, are going right. Um, Internet Architecture Board, we do this. There's some very interesting stuff coming up now where they're actually coming up with a new HTTP standard, HTTP. TP2 um, things are developing, which is going to make WebRTC work a lot better, and so you'll be able to do a lot more things in your browsers. And I will say, since we're here at Microsoft, we appreciate that Microsoft has been an organizational member a long time and is a big contributor, platinum sponsor of the Internet Society. Um, and so we have over 100 chapters around the world, and there's a ha handy map of everything. 
but, and so our chapters are geographically based. They're all geographically based, except for one, which is a disabled and special needs chapter, which is about accessibility, which is one of our big things that we, you know, we continuously push on. And then the other one, which is like arguable whether it's geographic or not, is we have uh, this one, which is the inter, inter, which has just reached chapter thing, which is interplanetary networking special interest group, which is now a chapter. And this in, is, includes Vint Cerf, who is like, you know, Vint and Robert Kahn were the founders, original founders of the Internet Society. And uh, the, the key technology is delay and disruption tolerant networking, otherwise known as DTN, so that you can send packets and things to, to like Mars or wherever where it's going to take, you know, however long it is for something to come back and it still works. You know, there's a lot of jokes in the IETF about, you know, pigeon sending packets by pigeon as, uh, you know, as being more efficient than some forms of uh, wired networking. But, um, and so we had a thing last year in San Francisco, a small meeting to sort of, this is going up to sort of the next level and coming up on here, we'll see that on May the 18th, which is not so far away, we're having the second annual Internet Planetary Networking Conference down in DC um, with Vince Cerf, the NASA Boeing team, uh, Scott Burley from uh, JPL, um, D the people who are standardizing the, the DTN protocols. And uh, the new thing they've got is like using lasers. They did this successful test with um, in 2013 of of communicating with the moon by, by, uh, by laser or something like that. And they're gonna do another, it says here, they're gonna do another test in 2017. So what I'm saying basically is that if you are interested in communication and space, this group is the one to join, okay? And they have a very short uh, URL, which is IPNSIG, IPNSIG.org. Okay, and that, oh, and of course, as you know from us, the event will be webcast on the Internet Society's live stream channel, as you might expect, as this is what we do. Okay, physical attendance limited to 150 people, so you must register, but I know if you register now, you can get to this, uh, it's free, okay, so that's what I have. <laughs>